Jesus told us one of the signs of his return before he comes back, he said, do not be deceived. Jesus told us that global deception will be prevalent just before he returns. He said it's going to be so bad that if it was possible, even the very elect of God would be deceived. There's going to be signs and wonders and miracle working power to deceive people in the last days. And there's going to be a collective worldwide effort to bring all the world's religions, denominations, and philosophies under one belief system. Brothers and sisters, Paul told us there's two things that have to happen before we're gathered up into the clouds to meet the Lord. The thing we're going to focus on today is the first thing he said. There's going to be a departure, a falling away from the Christian faith. Brothers and sisters, that is exactly what we see going on today. All the major denominations of the Protestant movement are falling back into Catholicism. And Catholicism is the mother of all apostasies. I'm going to show you some amazing facts and I want you to realize the time in which we now live. under Rome's leadership. In 1986, Pope John Paul II gathered in Assisi, Italy, the leaders of the world's major religions to pray for peace. There were snake worshippers, fire worshippers, spiritists, animists, Buddhists, Muslims, Hindus, North American witch doctors. I watched in astonishment as they walked to the microphone to pray. The Pope said they were all praying to the same God, praying to the same God, praying to the same God, and that their prayers were creating a spiritual energy that was bringing about a new climate for peace. John Paul II allowed his good friend the Dalai Lama to put the Buddha on the altar in St. Peter's Church in Assisi and with his monks to have a Buddhist worship ceremony there while Shintoists chanted and rang their bells outside. The prophesied world religion is in the process of being formed before our eyes, and the Vatican is the headquarters of the world. If all men and women, whatever the differences between them, cling to the truth with respect, for the unique dignity of every human being. A new world order. A new world order. A new world order can be achieved. Of a one world religious organization. Today, on the United Nations 55th anniversary, CBN News reporter Wendy Griffith takes a look at what's behind this push for a global religious voice. After a while, the drums, chants, and prayers representing many of the world's leading religions all started to sound alike, somehow losing their flavor in a melting pot of spiritual soup. The first ever Millennium World Peace Summit of Religious and Spiritual Leaders took place at the United Nations in August, and some believe it marked the first major step toward a movement to usher in a global spiritual body that may one day speak for all religions. Robert McGinnis with the Family Research Council says it appears the hidden agenda is to unite people under one religious organization so they will peacefully accept UN goals such as population control, abortion rights, and one world government. Instead of all these different gods, maybe there's one God who manifests himself and revealed himself in different ways to different people. You know, what about that, huh? While supporters of a global religious voice have come down hard on evangelical Christians who refuse to adopt their New Age agenda. Now, in 
this clip here you will see the leaders of the largest Protestant denominations coming to Rome and pledging allegiance to the Pope. Okay, I'm going to make a few jokes here, so don't be caught off guard and say what they might be saying. This is the evangelical Lutheran leader pledging allegiance to the Pope. One by one, they're called up, and let's see what they might be saying. As he introduces another Protestant leader to the Pope, this is the leader of the United Methodist. Oh, thank you, sir. I'm so grateful that you invited me to your apostasy movement. I can't tell you how grateful I am that you're putting down the King James Bible and leading people into this universal Jesus. It's been a pleasure to meet you. And your hands are so soft. Kissy, 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 kissy. Why, thank you. They're freshly manicured. Who is this next devil coming to pledge allegiance? Hi, Your Holiness. Wow, your hands really are soft. I'm from the Reformed Church. I just want to let you know I got my people in line to take orders and bow down to you, so you can count me in, sir. And just between you and me, when is the apocalypse? Oh, oh, time's up? Okay. Thank you, you stupid fool. You have no idea. Come on, my sheeple. Come to me. Your Holiness, it's an honor to meet you finally. I don't know what the problem was with Calvin and Luther. What are those guys thinking? You're wonderful. And I love that last book you wrote, Denying Jesus as God. That was a clever move, sir. Thank you for your evil genius and, oh, nice nails. Thank you. I can claw anything with these things. And uh, by the way, we're just as much God as Jesus is, don't you know? Oh, wow, a Baptist boy. Hey. Your holiness, don't you know if you can get the Baptists, you can get anybody? That's exactly what I was thinking. Oh, come to me, come to me, people. I will be your God. Come on, who's next? What's taking so long? Don't they know I have a religion to destroy? Oh, Pentecostal. Your Holiness, we are dancing, speaking in tongues, rolling on the flow. It's good to be a part of this, sir. Thank you for inviting me. Bless you. Excellent. We're going to build our one world religion for sure. Hi, Your Holiness. I'm so grateful that we're merging with Islam. It's my pleasure to meet you. Oh, your hands are wonderfully soft. Thank you for everything that you're doing to lead people to hell. That's wonderful, sir. You haven't seen nothing yet. Wait till I call fire down from heaven. Your Holiness, this is awesome. I'm so grateful to be a part of the great falling away from Christ. I've been writing my own Bible lately. I'd like you to check it out. Yes, no problem. Send me a manuscript. The leaders of the emergent church movement are now calling for the end of the Protestant Reformation. Here Brian McLaren openly confesses that he is a post-Protestant, Catholic, unfinished Christian. In 2003, Tony Jones released this book on youth ministry. He openly recommends many Roman Catholic practices Please notice the interesting symbol on this Emerging Church website. Does it look familiar? Now that the King James Bible has been removed from the hands of the majority of professing Christians, Satan's false prophets are able to deceive them into thinking that the Roman Catholic Church is no longer the enemy of Bible-believing Christianity. For 500 years, the basis of authority has been Sola Scriptura, Scriptura Sola, and it's not anymore. And when you say that to folk, it's very threatening. It's very, very threatening. There is always one overarching question. That question is, where is the authority? Because we don't know. We have lost our authority. You and I now live in a globalized society. Who's got the authority? One of the things that's happening in this great emergence is that the division between Roman Catholic believers and non-Roman Catholic believers 
is dwindling away as they enter into the emergence. Where now is the authority? The authority for the Reformation was sola scriptura and scriptura only. Scripture only and only scripture. No more Pope, no more magisterium, only the scripture. That authority won't work now. Not that scripture isn't the authority, but that the absolutism which, with which Protestant established it as the authority has now shattered and gone. You'd save a lot more souls if you could get rid of doctrine, get rid of doctrine, get rid of doctrine, get rid of doctrine. is we're at the last hour, last pope, the church has fallen away, and all we have left is our faith. Who are you going to believe? Who are you going to listen to? What are you going to do about it? This is not to scare you, but to prepare you. Follow the true gospel. Pray to the living God through Jesus Christ, our God and Savior. Believe in the blood sacrifice of Jesus and repent from your sins. Make sure you are called and elected. Make sure, make sure, make sure you are called and elected.